right, my friends, Jared Duke's back with you. Appreciate you joining me as always. Yet we have to talk once again about our favorite Fannie Willis, Nathan Wade. Folks, the corruption in Fulton County, Georgia has no limit, has no bounds. We have Nathan Wade. He on the stump, so to speak. He's traveling all over the country, giving all kinds of interviews to different news media outlets. He gave an interview the other day to CNN, and it's very interesting what happened during this interview because Nathan Wade stopped talking after he was asked a specific question. So let's take a look at it together right now. So this is Caitlin Collins. She's a reporter for CNN. She's having an interview with former prosecutor, former RICO attorney. Of course, he's the RICO attorney who never tried any type of RICO action whatsoever. That didn't stop Nathan Wade from participating in the Trump case, of course, with his paramour, DA Fulton County, Fannie Willis. We just love Fannie Willis, right? Let's get right into it. This interview is very interesting. Relationship with the district attorney. Oh, just as outlined uh, earlier, we are great friends. We, we speak regularly. Um, you know, the conversation has changed, though, you know, whereas before we're. Uh, yeah, what it is, is before, of course, their conversation has changed before they were playing smoochy smooch all the time and hide the sausage while bilking the taxpayers of the United States and of Fulton County out of to tune of roughly a million dollars that we know to date. I have a feeling there's much more in this particular saga coming our way. Our conversations were about this case. Um, you could, I'm sure you could imagine and appreciate the amount of time that it takes that, you know, you have to pour into uh, a case uh, trying to, uh, a case of this magnitude, trying to prosecute those defendants. But um, our conversations have shifted to um, how are you, how are you handling uh, the... I'm sure they spent a ton of time, folks. They worked on this case very hard while they were using your money, your taxpayer money, my money, traveling all over the world, going on many different cruises together, going to the Napa Valley, sipping on wine, probably visiting Nancy Pelosi and some of their other cohorts that are complicit in this lawfare against Donald Trump. It's really shocking. It's really unconscionable what these people have done, and they have obviously convinced themselves that these people are true American patriots. Well, of course, I think otherwise. The, the threats that are coming your way, are you being safe? Um, and, you know, democracy, w w the case will live on kind of thing. Just to clarify, when did the re romantic relationship between the two of you start? Now, just for context here, remember, the reason why this case is in serious jeopardy right now, this RICO case, not only is it a bogus lawfare case designed to take Donald Trump out of this year's election for the next president of the United States, but obviously they have convinced the judge, Judge Scott McAfee, that, oh, their relationship did not start until after he signed a contract on or about November 1st, I believe it was 2021, to represent Fulton County DA against Donald Trump and the other people that they indicted in this bogus, bogus case. This is testimony they have given under penalty of perjury. And if it could be proven, and I believe it has been proven otherwise by the numerous witnesses that have come forward and said that they have seen Nathan Wade and Fannie Willis together in a romantic relationship type of context well before 2021. Specifically, remember the lady that used to be the ex-BFF of Fannie Willis? They went to college together. She testified on the stand. She saw them together romantically back, oh, I believe it was 2019, but I digress. Yeah. So, you know, we get into, there's been this effort to, 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 to say that Okay, these these exact dates are 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 at issue, and these exact dates are. I'm getting this is where it happens, folks. Signaled here. Yeah, he's getting signaled. He's probably getting the middle finger from his people trying to corral him. Here they go. They're stopping the interview. Okay. They're going to take him off to the side. Keep rolling. Keep rolling. Oh yeah, keep rolling. Don't stop that camera. So they're having a little quiet powwow over there. Look at them too. talking to the bookcase with his handler out there. Because you got to remember, folks, if he accidentally says anything that is inconsistent with his sworn testimony, it should be automatic perjury. I think there's plenty to have a perjury problem right now. Anything they can prove before that, anything he says wrong that interferes with that November 1st, 2021 date is serious. Here he goes. Everything okay? Yeah. Just to revisit the question, it was 
to clarify when the romantic relationship started and when it ended? Sure. So, you know, I believe that the, the public has um, through uh, through the testimony and other uh, interviews, the public has a, a, a clear snapshot that this is clearly just a distraction. Um, it is not a, a relevant issue in this case. And I think that we should be focusing on uh, more of the facts and the indictment in the case. Well, oh, I'm, I'm sure he would like us all to focus on something else. Isn't that kind of like a chef with a fantastic soup trying to convince you, trying to convince me that, oh, the secret ingredient I'm using in my soup, it doesn't matter. Don't pay no attention to it. Outrageous. I would say the other reason he wants to essentially change the subject and not answer these questions, because let's be honest about it. If you're in a RICO case and you're facing life in prison, let's just call it what it is. Nothing says fair trial more than a prosecutor with no experience whatsoever playing hide the sausage with his paramour slash DA Fannie Willis. Sounds like a fair deal, don't it? Well, we know what's going on, right? Well, I ask because obviously this is, it's still a pending matter. It's going to be before the Court of Appeals. And you talked about how proud you were of all the work that, that you did in this office. And I know what he's proud of, and it has nothing to do with legitimate work. And I think the question that people have when they hear from the Court of Appeals, this isn't happening until next spring, is did the relationship... I got to make one other comment. Let's be honest about it. The more I think about it, I would say Nathan Wade probably actually earned his million dollars. I mean, let's be honest about it. What he did for Fannie Willis with Fannie Willis, you couldn't pay me enough money to do that. But then again, maybe a million dollars might change my mind. I just don't know. Jeopardize that work that you did in this investigation. The work and therein did. lies the issue. Um, why we wouldn't touch upon the, the work of the Court of Appeals or some higher court because it's a pending issue before them. I think that we should allow them to take a, a step back and allow them to take the evidence that they have um, and, and do their work, make the decision. Right. But you did testify to this and you were asked about on the stand about when it started and when it ended. It just wasn't completely clear because before it said, before the indictment, which was August 15th here in Atlanta. And then later, the answer was at the end of, of that year. And so I think that was the, the clarity that people were seeking. You know, he of doesn't like this. He doesn't like these, and when it these type of questions. Sure. And there again, there's a, there's a question before the court. Um, and that is the crux of the question. Uh, and Nathan Wade is correct. That is the crux of the issue. He wants you to believe it's not important the dates that him and Fannie Willis were, to, were together. Oh, it, it's not important. Nathan, it is very important. And we all see the truth. We all know the truth. It is so important that this so-called important RICO case that you and Fannie have brought against former President Donald Trump and many other individuals is the reason why right now the Georgia Court of Appeals has decided to take this entire case up and pause the whole case in its entirety. It's because of Fannie Willis's hubris. It's because of your malfeasance. Just call it what it is, Nathan Wade. When you don't get your way, you're out complaining. You're out flashing guns at reporters. You're doing everything except accepting responsibility for this sham of a trial that this is. You're a corrupt individual. You said you were a fantastic RICO prosecutor, and that is just not the case. You didn't even know the difference between a grand jury and a special grand jury. You are a disgrace to the profession. Folks, we can see exactly what's going on here this case is a long way from being over, obviously. Of course, we're awaiting the Supreme Court of the United States decision pertaining to whether or not former President Donald Trump has any type of culpability for actions he undertook while he was president of the United States. So we'll have to wait and see. But obviously, this particular case, in my opinion, is dead. And it's definitely dead until after the upcoming election, as it should be. Folks, if you have any friends, any relatives that are suffering the awful disease of indoctrination, please send them this video, share it with them. If you're still with me, might as well hit the thumbs up button, like, share, subscribe. I do appreciate you joining me today. I always say, keep that mind free, never give up. And until next time, my friends, I am J.R. Duke.